Well, thank you very much, everybody. And it's great to be in one of the truly great places of the world, Florida. Thank you very much. And hello to all of the true American patriots of the Florida Republican Party. These are tremendous people. I know them all, actually. And they are tremendous people, and they love our country, and I love them. And I'm pleased to report that just moments ago, I officially filed to appear on the ballot in the Florida Republican primary. So we'll see. Which I'm also happy to report that we're leading by about 75 points. So that's good. And with your help, we are going to win the Florida primary for the third straight time. We're going to win the state in a landslide next November, just like we've done twice. And we're going to defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we are going to make America great again. I want to thank a man who's done a fantastic job, State Party Chair Christian Ziegler. Thank you. Christian, wherever you may be, Christian, there's a lot of people out here. He's been, he's been really fantastic, and we appreciate it. And some really incredible warriors first and friends second, I think I could say, because they're warriors for our country. They love our country. They want our country to do incredibly well and be smart and safe. And that's not what's happening right now. We have a mess on our hands. We've never seen anything like it. What's happening now, I don't think this country has ever seen anything like it, from Afghanistan, the most embarrassing moment in our history, to inflation, to allowing what happened in Israel and allowing what happened in Ukraine. Millions of people are being killed, millions and millions of people. None of this would have happened. Inflation wouldn't have happened. Bad economy wouldn't have happened. None of it would have happened. But these are people that fight, and they fight so hard for you. I watched uh, numerous speeches that they just made. They were incredible, and uh, they're incredible people. They are members of Congress. Matt Gates. Where is Matt? Where is Matt. Thank you, Matt. Great job. I tell you, he loves your state, and uh, he loves our country, and they all do. Thank you very much, Matt. Good job. A, f a friend of mine who has been absolutely incredible, and he's a star, and I've been with him, actually, for a long time. Years ago, he gave me an award. I said, you know, you ought to run for politics someday. He made such an impression, and he did, and he won right from the beginning. Byron Donalds. There's Byron. Thank you, Byron. And his great family and his wife, who knows more about education than just about anybody I know. So stay handy, okay? Stay handy. Thank you, Doug. A warrior who really understands what's happening in the world and really understands the military and everything having to do with the military. And I can tell you that the man following, likewise, these are two incredible people, very, very strong on military. If we'd listened to their advice, we wouldn't be in the problems we are right now. Michael Waltz and Corey Mills. Thank you. Great people. These are really great people, incredible. And they are warriors, that's what we need. We need warriors, we can't have non-warriors. As well as Kansas GOP chair has done a fantastic job, Mike Brown, who's here. Mike Brown, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, great job. How are we doing in Kansas, pretty good? I hear good, good. <laughs> I think we're doing good there. And today, I'm very grateful to receive the endorsements of seven additional Florida legislators. And you know what? I'll, I'll announce them, and I'll say, come on up. And of those great 
congressmen and Christian want to come up, you can come up too, because I see this is a very large stage. There was no holding back. So if you guys want to come up, come on, come on up. State Senator Debbie Mayfield. Debbie's great. And State Representatives Jessica Baker, Webster Barnaby, Mike Beltran, David Boriel, Kevin Steele, Paula Stark. Thank you very much. Ileana Garcia and Elena Garcia. I want to what a nice looking group of people. And also with us who gave us the endorsement a little while ago and uh, just two great friends, I said, well, we have to bring them up too. Well, not really, sir. They did it before. I said, we're going to bring them up. They were early and they were great and they are great. Juan Porras and Randy Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Great job. Not present, state senators. You know, Joe Gruters is an incredible man. You know that, right? And he's been, he's been with us from the beginning, and he's been right. We would all agree he's been great. And Anna Maria Rodriguez, you know that? Great, great. And she sends her love, and she's done some very important work. And another person who uh, gave us a very big endorsement on Friday, and it hit, uh, got a lot of publicity because he's an important guy, and he's a very good guy, and he's a U.S. Senator, and it's called Rick Scott. U.S. Senator Rick Scott. He's been, uh, he's been a friend of mine for a long time, and he gave us a beautiful endorsement. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will not forget. We will not forget. We're going to win. We're going to win big. Very proud of you. I appreciate what you did on the floor. Great people. For seven years, you and I have been fighting side by side to rescue our nation from the evil and sinister forces who hate it and want to destroy it. Now we're approaching the most critical battle of our lives. Exactly one year from tomorrow, one year, we're getting there. But one year is a long time with the kind of destruction these people can do. They're grossly incompetent. You'll vote in the most important election in the history of our country. I believe that. You know, I used to say 2016 was the most — and I meant it at the time, but this is maybe far more important because our country is failing. We're a nation that's failing, but we're going to finish the job we started. We did some job, and we're going to finish that job. We're going to finish that job. And crooked Joe Biden's banana republic ends on November 5th, 2024. It's a banana republic. Job number one will be to stop the invasion on our southern border. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in U.S. history. We never had a border as secure, and that included drugs and human trafficking. We had the best numbers we've ever had in the history of our country, and now we have the worst numbers probably in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this. There never been — there's never been anything like it when you see what's coming in from mental institutions and prisons all over the world. We built over 500 miles of border wall, got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. And for those people that talk about Mexico, you know, I said Mexico is going to pay for a piece of the wall. They paid for much more than that. They gave us 28,000 soldiers because there was no way legally they could pay for our wall. You know, they tried to work that, but they paid much more. They paid for our soldiers, and uh, that wasn't easy to do. They also did many other things for us. And now we have, as you probably know, we have a caravan heading up. That's the biggest one anyone's ever seen. And Biden has no clue as to what to do. But I know what to do.
We also deported illegal alien criminals by the thousands and thousands, and we got them out, MS-13, by the thousands. We slashed illegal immigration by over 90 percent. Think of that. And under Biden, the United States has become the dumping ground of the world, with gang members and inmates being emptied into our — into our beautiful land, our beautiful country, emptied. Tough, tough people, a lot of them as bad as you can ever find. And they're coming into our country by the tens of thousands. Also, terrorists are pouring into our country. Many, many terrorists are coming in. Thousands of middle-aged men are coming in. Young men are coming in. Everyone's saying, how come they're all so young and so strong? And they're coming from China. 16 percent come from China. Why are they all young and strong, mostly men? And you look at other countries are well represented also, including countries that right now are fighting in the Middle East. They're coming in by the thousands and thousands. We have no idea, actually, where they come from. We think they come from different parts. These people have no idea what's happening. They're destroying our country. They're destroying our country. The countries that are sending these caravans are trying to extort the United States out of billions and billions of dollars, but Biden doesn't want the caravans to stop. He probably wants them to come in. He doesn't know what he's doing. Look. The guy can't get off a stage. It's crazy. I say it. I've watched him again. Every time he goes on a stage, he can't get off. Exit, exit. Like on this one, this is a hell of a big stage. What was on the stage before, Christian? They must have had a massive choir or something. This is a hell of a stage. But he would not be able to figure out there's about seven staircases that I see. He would not be able to figure it out. He can't put two sentences together, and he's in charge of our nuclear negotiations. But I think he wants our country to fail. I, I really believe they must, or the group that's actually running the country must want it to fail. As president, I stopped the caravans, and I did it very quickly. They can be done, and it can be done. They can be stopped. But the people running it you look at the people running it, look at the people in charge. They're grossly incompetent. They don't have a clue, and they really don't know what to do. I believe they don't know what to do. I don't, I don't think that somebody can say, isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, countries are very smart. I got to know many of the presidents, the prime ministers, the dictators, the non-dictators, the people that get elected legally and the people that get elected illegally. I got to know every one of them. I tell you, they're very smart people. And when they're sending people into our country, they're not sending their best. They're keeping their best. They want to keep their best. You know, that's pretty basic. But we're getting some very rough people coming into our country, and it's got to stop, and we've got to have the largest mass deportation effort in history, and we're going to It'll be started immediately. And I'm helping Biden when I say that, because when people are watching, you know, right now, if you watch Biden, they look at this guy who doesn't know what the hell's happening. Right now, when they hear me say mass deportation, and we're leading Biden in all the polls, but mass deportation, I'm helping Biden because people are going to stop. It's going to slow him up. Biden came in, he invited everybody in. It's like an invasion of our schools, our hospitals. We don't have hospital space. We don't have anything. There's no country where this would be sustainable. There's no country. When I'm reelected, we will tell the foreign nations that sending caravans that all of these caravans that are coming up will not get one more cent of American money. You know, when you explain no money, no anything, no education. We're not going to take care of you better than our vets. You know, they get taken care of with Biden better than our great vets who are living on streets. We had that situation taken care of so well, and now it's right, right back where it started. And for any radical left charity, nonprofit, or so-called aid organization supporting these caravans and illegal aliens, we will prosecute them for their participation in human trafficking, <laughs> child smuggling, and every other crime we can find.
So Crooked Joe Biden, you know I changed the name. It was Sleepy Joe. And Hillary's sort of gone now, so. And you know, we have, <laughs> we have, I, I know what you mean. What, what they have done, what these people have done to our country. But I said, do we want to go with Sleepy Joe? Because now, you know, I believe in a lot of words out there, a lot of great words. We can use one per person. We don't need to use, we don't need to use it on two people. So it was a great day for Hillary about two months ago when I said, we're not going to call her Crooked Hillary anymore. We're just going to call her maybe Beautiful Hillary. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> And I think she and Bill, they have a great relationship. You know, she and Bill went out and they celebrated that night because she was no longer called Crooked Hillary. I just felt that the term, especially what they're finding in Congress and all of the things that they're finding, I thought Crooked would be a better term. Crooked Joe Biden. Let's do a poll right now. Do you mind? Let's do it. So we have Sleepy and we have Crooked. And just shout out which one you like, and we'll start with Crooked, all right? Should he be Crooked Joe Biden? That's tough to beat. That's a tough one to beat. Sleepy Joe Biden. Uh, okay, Crooked Joe. But Crooked Joe Biden is importing millions of illegal aliens from all over the world and putting them on the fast track to welfare, free health care, food stamps, government housing, work permits, education, everything, everything. They get everything. And again, this is not sustainable. These are millions and millions of people. On day one, I will shut down this travesty, terminate all work permits for legal aliens, and demand that Congress send me a bill outlawing all welfare payments to illegal migrants of any kind. We have to ask them to leave. We have to ask them to go home. We have to. And we start with the really bad ones first, if that's OK. Some people say, oh, start. We got to get the bad ones out. We have really bad really bad people. And we got to get them out of here fast because this is a this is a bomb that's waiting to happen. This is a terrible thing. And I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act to remove all known and suspected gang members like MS-13, <laughs> drug dealers, and cartel members from the United States, ending the scourge of illegal alien gang violence once and for all. The violence is unbelievable. We had it close to stop. We took out thousands of MS-13, probably the toughest gang. Uh, history says when you see somebody with tattoos all over their face and bad phrases like uh, destroy the USA, like all sorts of bad things on their face and on their forehead, uh, history says it's not going to work out too well. <laughs> We're going to get MS-13 out. We took out thousands, thousands and thousands and you know, the countries, Honduras, Guatemala, they didn't want them, El Salvador, they didn't want them back. They didn't want them back. And when we said, get them out, I was informed by generals, I was informed by everybody, you can't because they won't take anybody back. And I said, what do you mean? Under the Obama administration, they wouldn't take anybody back. They put airplanes, big commercial planes on the runways. So we'd put them in a plane, we'd fly, we couldn't land, they came back. And this went on for years, never took them back. I said, so tell me about it. What's happening? He said, they just won't take them back. They don't want them back. I can't blame them. And I said, how much do we pay them as a group? How much money? You know, we give everybody money. We pay everybody money. It's ridiculous. You want to know the truth. But I said, how much do we pay them? $750 million a year. I said, so we give these countries 750 They won't take them back. That's right. I say, stop payment immediately. No more money. The following. Yeah. I did exactly what Matt Gates would have done, okay? <laughs> Except he might have been a little bit more violent about it. <laughs> but I said, stop payment on the $750 million immediately. And the next day, I go into the Oval Office, and I got there nice and early. I like to get there early. I mean, it's the Oval Office. You like to be in the Oval Office. And I get there, and I had three separate phone calls from the heads of each country. Uh, Mr. President, we don't understand. We understand that 
uh, you are stopping payment. Why? I said, because you know why? You're sending people into our country. They're sending these people, by the way. These people don't just happen to go into a caravan. They're sending. The countries are putting them in. And you're sending us a lot of bad people, and you're sending very dangerous people, including terrorists, and we're not paying you anymore until we can bring them back into your country. May we call you back, sir? They called back about two minutes later. They said, it would be our great honor to accept MS-13 <laughs> back into our country. So they had a problem for seven years. They had that problem. I got to take it care of in about four minutes. And we brought them back by the tens of thousands and now they all come flowing back through this border. It's so, it's so horrible and such a shame. But I already started the process, would have had it completed very quickly, and we wanted to end birthright citizenship. I heard a couple of your speakers in the plane where you where you touch a piece of our land, and congratulations, you become a citizen. By the way, there's no country in the world that does this stupid stuff. If you touch a piece of land, you go through years of litigation and, you know, nobody ever shows up. They say, come back in four years. We think we'll get you a trial date. Just a touch, one foot, one foot, that's the end. You can't do anything. Uh, not going to happen. Using Title 42, we will stop, and we did. All people coming in with very, very bad diseases that other people can catch. You know, you have uh, people coming in that are very, very sick. And it's horrible that they are so sick, but they come in with diseases, and, and the, disease, the disease spreads all over our country, and it's been happening, and we're just not going to take it anymore. We're not. And I'll end the child trafficking crisis by returning all trafficked children to their families and their home countries, and we'll do that immediately. Under Biden, the same people who raped, tortured, and murdered Israeli men, women and children, so sad when you saw that. So sad. Would have never happened with us. You know why? Because when I was president, Iran was broke. They were broke. You know that, right? For a reason, Byron could tell you. Byron, you knew that. Byron knew it very well. Michael knew it very well. They all, Corey knew it very well. Uh, they had no money, and they weren't spreading terror because they couldn't. And I told China, if you, if you buy one barrel of oil, you're not doing business in the United States, so we're going to put 100 percent tariff on everything that does come in. I told India the same thing. I told everybody. And they all listened, and they stopped. And we had something that was incredible. We had the great terror organization stopped, totally stopped. They stopped. And we had no problem. You know, for four years, we didn't have an incident. Think of it. And I didn't want to talk. I wanted to say it so badly, even during the campaign, where we did much better than we did the first time, by the way. We got millions and millions of more votes. But I wanted to say it so badly. There's been no terror. We put the terror ban. We put everything. We did, we did things that nobody's ever done before. We had no terror for four years. We had no problems for four years. And I couldn't talk about it because I didn't want to say it, and the next day something happens. That happened to them, actually. You know, they said, well, we're doing good. But they weren't doing good. They were getting, were getting beaten up. But they did it, and then they had the attack, like one day after he made the statement. As soon as he made the statement, he had the attack. How about the man, and I'll ask you, the military people here, including the congressman, he said, I hope they don't attack us from the north, because that's our weak spot. Now, who the hell would say that? I watched him, security advisor. He said, I hope they don't attack Israel from the north because that's our weak spot. Who the hell would say that? <laughs> now, I'd say, I hope they attack us from the north because that's the toughest spot of all. And they wouldn't do it, right? No, I watched this guy saying, I hope. I hope they won't. And who would say this? So Biden said this a couple of months ago. We have no ammunition with the United States. You know, I rebuilt. I rebuilt the United States military. We rebuilt the whole military. One of the many things we did. Of course, we gave a big chunk of it to Afghanistan, one of the most pathetic situations I've ever seen. But we rebuilt 
the entire military, and we had so much ammunition, we had to take warehouses all over the country and beyond the islands. We had so much ammunition, and they've used the ammunition, just like they've used all the oil that we put into the strategic reserves. It's at the lowest level it's ever been right now. The lowest level it's ever been, and we bought it very cheaply. We bought it very cheaply. And all of these things, there is nothing. I can't think of one thing in three years that these people have done that's good. But Biden got up, Biden got up, and he said, we have no ammunition. Now, number one, we should never be put in that position. But assuming it's true, who the hell would say it? <laughs> you think President Xi of China and Putin and all these, do you think they hear that statement a little bit? They can't believe what's happened to this country. You know, they respected our country when I was there. They respected your president. I will tell you that. And so did Kim Jong-un of North Korea. They respected us. And we were safe because they respected us. We were very, very safe. And they never talked to us the way they talked to this group. I mean, China talks to us like we're, like we're children, which we basically are mentally, if you look at our leaders. They're less than children. I just met some children that are far smarter. They're like six years old. They're, smart, they're smarter than Biden, by a lot. And that would include in his prime. I'm not just talking about that. <laughs> on day one, I will restore the Trump travel ban on entering from having people that like to blow up our shopping centers and kill our people and do lots of bad things. Entry from terror-plagued countries, we will not allow people to come in, and we will implement strong ideological screening for all immigrants. We did that, and it was unbelievably <laughs> successful. It was done at the Supreme Court. They approved it, and a lot of people were a little surprised, but it was a great thing. And, you know, again, we had no problem. I didn't talk about it, but I talked about it as soon as I left. I talked about it because it was an amazing thing we did. We were having a lot of problems, like World Trade Center, like a lot of other problems, and we had no problem during that four-year period because they knew they cannot mess around. We had it tight. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists and then you don't want your country to do well, you don't want your country to be successful, you're just not going to get in. You're not getting in. You're not coming into our country. On every policy, from the border to energy, from immigration to education, crooked Joe Biden always takes the side that helps America's enemies every time. The guy doesn't have a clue. He helps the enemies, and now we know why. Because Joe Biden is corrupt, and he's incompetent, and he's totally compromised. They are bribing our president. They're bribing our president. And you see this. This week, the House Republicans published explosive evidence. And I'll tell you, uh, they've done a great job. They've really done a fantastic job. They really have. Amazing. Very explosive evidence proving once and for all that Crooked Joe received 40000 in cash and 200000 Every day, you see, it's a, d a different check. But 40000 in cash laundered out of China and the real number, and when the final results are in, you're going to see millions and millions of dollars. Remember during the debate, Chris Wallace, how's he doing, by the way? Chris Wallace was there. <laughs> and I said, why are you getting three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? And Biden couldn't answer the question, but Chris Wallace came in and helped him. You're not allowed to ask that question. Why not? Two years later, that became a big subject. Why did they get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? It's a horrible thing. We brought it up, and he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't let it be. I said, who am I debating here? Am I debating two people or one person? But I've had that every single debate, just about, right? The laptop from hell said Joe is getting 10 percent, and now we have the cold, hard proof that Crooked Joe got exactly 10 percent of a very big payment from China. He got the money. He got it in his account. That's what, could you imagine if I got it? I would be, man. They say, we are thinking about reinstituting the death penalty. 
That's why the number one phrase out there right now, if you look at it, the number one phrase, and I'm greatly honored by it, but they have hats and everything all over the place, not sold by us, although we may start it. Why not? Trump was right about everything. We've been right about everything. And three years ago, in that same debate, Crooked Joe stood on the debate stage and said, I quote, I have not taken a penny from any foreign source ever in my life. I mean, that's one of the greatest lies in history, right? And he said no one in his family had ever taken or made any money from China. Well, he's better off if he puts it just China, because how about all the others? But China was a big payer to them. Now we have pictures of the checks deposited directly into his account. If Joe Biden was not guilty, and everybody knows he was, he just lies. There's never been anybody that lied. Listen, the other day, they were talking about truckers. He said he was a trucker. Then they were talking about airline pilots. He said he was an airline pilot. No, no, he said he was an airline pilot. Then they were talking about tractor operators. He said, when I operated a tractor, he never operated a tractor. <laughs> but probably his biggest sin of all, to all of those that like sports and love golf and everything, he said he was a six-handicapped golfer. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, you don't know many of you about golf, but six-handicap's a pretty good golfer. You know, they're percentage-wise, not many. And I watched him take a swing. He's not a six. He's not a 12. He's not a 25. And he's not a 36. You know, 36 is the max. He doesn't qualify for any handicap. He's a six. I have friends, they're very good golfers. They're six handicaps. I say, Joe Biden says he's the equivalent of you. No, it's just a lie. Everything's a lie. The whole thing is a lie. The whole election was a lie. As President, I will be creating a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to shed sunlight on every dark and rotten corner of Washington, D.C., starting with Biden. And you got to understand, we were doing a job. I got rid of Comey. I got rid of the FBI top guys. I got rid of them all. Boy, oh, boy. If I didn't, I probably wouldn't be standing here talking to you, because that was a bad thing they were planning. It was good instinct. A friend of mine said, uh, very strong political person that everybody knows, he said, that's going to be the biggest mistake. Firing this guy, when I fired him, will be a big mistake. Look at what's happening. And last week, he said it was one of the greatest political instinct moves that he's ever seen, firing Comey, because there were bad things planned. And we learned all about them, because that was like throwing a rock into a hornet's nest when I fired that guy. And then we learned about the insurance policy. Remember the insurance policy? Remember the two? Darling, darling, right? Darling, she's going to win, isn't she? Yes, darling. She's going to win 100 million to one. But in case she doesn't win, we have an insurance policy. I said, whoa. That was the beginning, right, fellas, or all you guys? That was the beginning when they said, we have an insurance policy. That meant that they had a policy that if I won, they're going to get me out of office. These people are corrupt people. Got rid of everyone. Got rid of all of these people. And then we had the COVID. We had to take care of it. We had a lot of things happen. We had a lot of amazing successes. We did a great job in COVID. We never got the credit for the job we did. We let Republican governors keep their states open. Many of them did. Henry McMaster, South Carolina, did a great job. South Dakota did a great job. Tennessee did a great job, a lot of them. They kept them open, no? I will say this. Every Republican governor did much better than the best 
Democrat governor, it's true. What they did, because some of them kept them open, some of them it was — some of them was uh, not too many, frankly, but some opened up pretty quickly. But the Democrats kept them closed, like it seemed like forever, in all instances, and they really did a terrible job. Crooked Joe puts China first, Russia first, Venezuela first, Ukraine first, illegal aliens first, environmental lunatics first, everyone else first. He puts them ahead of our country. But he puts America last. He puts our workers last. He puts our industries last. He puts your families last. He puts everything that's good last. It's what happens. I put America first every single time. And our country is under the highest level of threat. You saw that the other day. It came out of a lot of different people's mouths. Highest threat that we've ever had. And yet all they do with the DOJ and FBI is, let's go after Trump and his family. Let's go after Trump. It's pretty sad. But it's no wonder that crooked Joe Biden and the far-left lunatics are desperate to stop us by weaponizing law enforcement, which we can't allow. But it does mean that the next president is able to say to the attorney general, you know what, there's somebody running over there, and he happens to be a Democrat, he's doing very well, and he's killing me in the polls. Indict him! Because that's what they did. This has never happened in our country. It happens in third world countries. Never happened in our country before by weaponizing law enforcement. They go out and they weaponize law enforcement. It's really high-level election interference, and the congressmen and all of the people that we introduced today are doing a lot of things about it. People are very concerned about it because it really brings us into a very low level as a country. And we're beating them so badly in the polls that they feel that's the only way they can win. That's their form of cheating. You know the forms of cheating they did last time? This is a different form of cheating. In the Harris poll, we lead the primary field by 50 points, with Trump at 61 and Ron DeSanctimonious at 11, <laughs> and Bird Brain at 6. And we're demolishing Crooked Joe Biden in the general by 10 points, 11 points. How about ABC Washington Post? They came out with a poll a week and a half ago that Trump is leading by nine. Then they said, whoops, we made a mistake, it's actually 10. Whoops, we made a mistake, it's actually 11. They say, it must be an outlier. So they spent a million dollars on a poll, and when the result came out, they said, oh, it must be a mistake. It's not a mistake. You go to every house, even coming here, we're passing houses. Every house has a Trump sign, Trump 2024. What we have to be careful of is the vote counters. You know, the vote counters are far more important than the candidate. Isn't that sad that we, ha we would have to say that? But the vote counters are far more important than the candidate, what they do and how they do it. And we have to be very, very careful. People say to me so often, you know, are you sure that's going to be good? We have the best people in it, but these are really crooked people. They cheat, and they cheat like hell. And you know what? If they didn't, they couldn't win. Look, open borders, high taxes, weak, woke military. I mean, what well, they did to our military, but our military is incredible. The strength of our military. You know, we defeated ISIS. We took out ISIS 100 percent. Soleimani, al-Baghdadi, the job we did, our military is incredible. But we have to be vigilant. We have to be strong. And we can't let these people push us around when it comes to election time, because we have all the votes we need. I tell people when we put them on, I don't, don't help me with the votes. We have the votes. Help me with, it used to be election day. Now I call it election period. We have 62 days in some case, 62 days, where they have it two months before. You can vote two months before. And in case you need more time after the election is over, you get two weeks extra. You don't even know who's — it's so horrible what they're doing. We should have all paper ballots, voter ID, and same-day voting. Same-day voting, like they have in France. You know, France had mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots are a disaster. They're a disaster. California sends out 36 mail-in ballots. They go all over the place. Some people get six. Some people get eight. And many people 
Republicans, I don't think, do it much. But many people, they take those ballots and they send them all back in. But you look at some of these mail-ins, you know, Jimmy Carter, who, by the way, is the happiest man around today, because he is no longer considered a bad president. In fact, compared to crooked Joe Biden, I probably think he's considered one of the most brilliant people on Earth. He's a happy man, which is good. But, you know, he had a commission with some other prominent senators, and they came to one conclusion. You can't do mail-in ballots. France gave it up because it was very corrupt. And they went in their last election. They had 36 million votes, all done in one day. Strong voter ID. They had very strong identification. And they had a winner, and they had a loser. At 10 o'clock in the evening, everyone went home. The winner was happy. The loser was unhappy. There were no disputes. Same-day voting, paper ballots. You know, they make a special paper that's almost impossible to forge. It's great. Watermark. Paper ballots. And voter ID. It's so, it's so good, and it's so easy. And you save a lot of money. It is time for the Republican establishment to stop wasting time and money trying to push weak rhinos and never-Trumpers that nobody wants on the ballot. And to get behind the only candidate and candidates that can withstand the attacks from the radical left horror shows. They are horrible people. They are her And we got to win this election again. We don't win this election. You know, it's interesting. When we were in 2016, all I talked about was the border. The border, the military, but the border, the border, because it was so bad, nothing compared to it. By the way, that border, compared to today, was 100 percent better. But I just talk about the border all the time. And then the other things, right? But the border, then I won the election. The problem is, I did such a good job at the border that I couldn't talk about it in 2020. I told the story. Every time I mentioned the border, my people would say, Sir, nobody cares about the border. You fix the border, sir. There's no problem with the border, though. I said, I want to talk about the border because it can get bad again. Or at least I want to brag and tell people what a great job I did. <laughs> sir, nobody cares what a great job you did. They said that about Ron. You know that I endorsed Ron, and he went from having very little to having a lot and got him elected. And I thought that was nice. And then I got him past the crackhead because that guy was — and don't kid yourself, that guy at the time was a very strong politician. They all said he's going to be a president someday. He's going to be a president. You remember him? Good-looking guy, everything good. And Ron said he can't beat him. I said, you're going to beat him. We got him past the primary. You know, in the primary, the Secretary of Agriculture was leading him by 37 points. You know that, right? Then I endorsed him, and he became a rocket ship in 24 hours. So we got him there. Then we got him past the election because we did some giant Trump rallies for him. I said, Ron, you're going to win. I said, he said, no. He asked me for the endorsement. I said, you're so far behind that if George Washington and Abraham Lincoln came back from the dead and endorsed you, you couldn't win. He said, they like you in Florida, sir, very much. I think they, I could. Tears flowing from his eyes. And I said, I need your endorsement, sir. I need your endorsement, please. I need your frickin' endorsement, please. So I gave him the endorsement, and he got the nomination. We then did the rallies, and he won. Four years later, they said, Governor, are you going to run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I have no comment. I said, wow, no comment. That means he's going to run to me. And I said, uh, let's hit him hard right now. And my people said, sir, don't hit him. He's a Republican. I said, I don't care if he's a Republican. And we hit him hard, and now he's like a wounded falling bird from the skies. But I don't like that, you know. And we talk about loyalty because I think it's the same thing. I said to the people, it's so disloyal. I don't think voters are going to like that. And my people said, they don't care, sir. They don't care about loyalty. I said, I think they do care about loyalty. And I was right. They do care. They do care. Every dollar that we spent, and it's true, every dollar that we spend on these never-Trump super PACs, 
is a dollar that's being donated to reelect crooked Joe Biden. It's a sham. You know, they have a debate coming up on Wednesday. By the way, we're doing a big rally in uh, Hialeah. You'll all be there. You'll be there. You're all going to be there. Every one of you got to be there. No, it's a big, it's going to be a big rally. But we're doing a big rally in Hialeah. It's, uh, some people would call it counter-programming. I, I said, you know, I never thought of it that way, but I guess that would be a good name, wouldn't it? But, you know, the last debate had the lowest ratings in the history of presidential debates. Did you know that? And this one should do slightly worse. <laughs> but they have a debate coming up. People don't want debates. I mean, I heard they booed Christie off the stage today. Is that true? I really say, what's he doing? Look, you know, we're all in a party. We want to win this race. What's he doing? The guy's, he's at one and a half. Okay? And how about Ada Hutchinson? You have Ada, not Asa. Ada! No, you had Hutch. And I heard he got booed off. Who got more boos? Who got louder boos? Christy or Ada Hutchinson? Christy. No, I heard they virtually booed him off the stage. Because, you know what, what's it all about? He's just doing it because I didn't give him a job in the administration. What, what's he doing? And why would I do a debate when Christy, sir, I'm sorry, he is not a fat pig, okay? This man, he said, he is not a fat pig. No, it's true. And you can't, you can't use the term fat. You're allowed to use the word pig, but not fat. No, the man just said, he's a fat pig. And I said, no, he's not a fat pig. So now the press can't kill me because all I'm doing is responding. I'm responding. He is not a fat pig. We're one year from Election Day. We need to put every dollar and every bit of energy into winning in November. We don't need to have people that are at one, two, three percent out there doing a thing. And, you know, they say, why aren't you doing So if, let's say it looks like uh, Bird Brain is going to be cap capturing. It looks like she might be in second place fairly soon. You know, they're like seven. Uh, and we're at 70. And why would you debate? I mean, they are professional politicians. Why would you debate people when you have a 55, 60, 62 point lead? That's lead. Uh, you know, you want a smart president, right? I think if I did that, I'd say, we didn't know he was so stupid, right? We want a smart president. But what we're doing instead is we're doing a massive, it's going to be wild. We're doing a big rally in Hialeah, and I hope you're all going to be there the night of the debate. And we'll start it right as they started, right that time. But it's not counter-programming. We didn't mean that to be counter-programming. It just happened to be a coincidence, okay? It's a coincidence. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we are not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. Right? Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, fascists, indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. I am being, thanks a lot, I appreciate it. I'm being indicted for you. And I tell this story, did anybody ever heard, I'm sure you never heard of the gentleman, Al Capone, did you ever hear of Al Capone? Alphonse Capone, he was the meanest of all. If he had dinner with you and if he didn't like you, he'd kill you the next day. He only got indicted one time. I got indicted four times within a period of about 90 seconds. If I fly my plane over a blue state, I have to go to a grand jury the next day, and then they indict. You know, they've weaponized this stuff. Alphonse Capone, this was a serious Scarface, right? Scarface. He had a large scar from here to here, and he didn't get that from playing tiddlywinks. He got that <laughs> from being tapped, but he only got indicted one time. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's what it's all about.
And just so you know, if I didn't do this, if I said, oh, I'm going to just relax, I had four years with these maniacs. Look, we had China, we handled China really well. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars. Nobody's ever taken in 10 cents. Now, one president took in, I took in hundreds of billions of dollars. We have North Korea. We got along with North Korea. Kim Jong-un and I got along. The press hated it. They, they said it's terrible that he gets along. No, it's not. He has massive nuclear weapons. We don't want people going around. We got along very well. Russia. I told Putin, I said, you can't go into Ukraine. If you go into Ukraine, we're going to have big problems. I told him what. He said, no way you're going to do that. I said, way, 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 way. I'm going to do that. And we got along great, but he said, no way. I said, way, no way, way, we argued for about. And he didn't believe me, but you know what? He believed me 10%. That's all you needed. We only needed 10%. And they weren't going in. It wasn't even a thought. And it was the apple of his eye. We used to talk about it. It was the apple of his eye. But they weren't going in. When they saw Biden's gross incompetence and those television generals — we have great generals, by the way. We used them to defeat ISIS. They did it in record time, four weeks. It was supposed to take five years, maybe four years. And they didn't even know if they could do it. And we did it in four weeks. We have unbelievable generals, but not the television guys, right? not the television guys. But when you look at the things we did and what we've done and how we've done it, it's incredible. And we can do that again. We can do it again, and we can do it very quickly. We're going to do it very quickly. You know, they don't use this line anymore, but DeSanctis was saying, oh, you have to see. So I think it was NBC. Because branding is a very big deal, right? So I call him Ron DeSanctimonious. I call him Ron DeSanctis. So NBC, <laughs> sorry, no, he's all right. Leave him alone. He'll be, he'll be fine. He's recovering. Leave him alone. But some, you know, big broadcaster, it wasn't meant as a comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have Governor Ron DeSanctis with us today. I branded him as DeSanctis. They called him DeSanctis three times. I loved it. I thought it was great. That's great branding, right? But he tried to change his name, too, to D, right? Ron D. Sanctus, right? Do you remember that? He wouldn't respond to people unless they call him D. Sanctus, which I don't think is as good. The Sanctus is better than D. Sanctus. And I did give him one message. I said, never change your name in the middle of a campaign. Do you agree? <laughs> but we're doing good. We're doing good with everybody. We have uh, numbers that nobody's actually ever seen before, and we're going to most importantly, we're going to do great with Biden because, I don't know, if he gets to the starting gate. Who thinks he's going to get to the starting gate? Does most? Okay. Ready? He gets to the starting gate. He does. Who, think he, who thinks he gets to the starting gate? That's not good news. Who thinks he doesn't get to the starting gate? <laughs> we have great confidence in our president, don't we? No, when you think that he's in charge of nuclear negotiations with Putin and Xi and all these guys that are at the top of their game, they are at the top of their game. I know them very well. I got along with them all well. You know, it's funny. I got along with the really tough guys, but the ones that were weak, I didn't get along with them so well. It's sort of a weird feeling. You know, one of the strongest of all is Viktor Orban. And Viktor Orban of, you know that, of Hungary. And he has the privilege of fronting on Ukraine and Russia. It's the only one. He fronts on both. Those are very well. And they interviewed him last week. You probably saw this. It became actually a big story, which is shocking that the fake news would put it in. They said, what would you tell President Biden to do to solve the whole world? By the way, this isn't just the U.S. with all the things that are going wrong. The whole world is blowing up because of us. The whole world. What would you do? What would you tell him? And he goes, I would tell him to immediately resign and put Trump in charge, let him be president again, because for four years, this world had no problems. China respected him, Russia respected him, North Korea respected him, and they were afraid of him. I don't want people to be afraid, but that's okay. If they are, that's good too, right? You want to be a little unpredictable. But Viktor Orban, who's really a tough guy and a respected guy. He said, put Trump back. When Trump was here, we had no problems. We didn't, we didn't have problems with China going into Taiwan, which they want to do immediately. You know, the day I left, they flew 28 bombers right over the middle of Taiwan, because that was a signal. But it's, uh, 
It was a great honor that he made that statement. In the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I'm just standing in their way. And you know that's happening. That's what it is. <laughs> Remember this. And, and it is true. If I didn't do this, or if I was number four or five or three, instead of leading him and everybody else in the polls, I, this wouldn't be happening. If I, if I didn't run, or if I were doing poorly and I was way in the back, like Christy and Ada, you know, uh, this would not be happening. This would not be happening. But if it is happening, it's okay, because, you know, somebody asked me the other day, you've gone through so much. If you had it to do again, you had the greatest life in the world. They, I mean, the greatest. I mean, you couldn't have had better. But I love our country. Our country wasn't having such a great life. But they said to me, if you had it to do again, would you do it again? I said, without question. I answered that question and because we have to save our country. We have to save our country. And we will save our country. You know what I called? I called this the other day. Some people thought it was an incredible term. They never heard of it. I called this, this four-year period. It's a four-year period when it's up. I called it a pause. It's a pause. And we've learned from the pause. We've learned that all of these things that they have don't work. You know, the energy is a disaster. We were energy independent, and now we're going to be energy dominant within a matter of months. We're going to give tremendous amounts of oil and gas to Europe. We're going to make a fortune. We're going to pay down debt. We're going to lower taxes still further. You know, I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. We're going to lower taxes further. And, but think of it. Three years ago, we were energy independent. We had gasoline selling for $1.87 a gallon. And now they want to go to all electric cars. You know what that means? That means that all our, all of our auto workers are going to be out of a job. They're going to be out of a job. They're doing a contract now. I was with them, with them in Michigan recently. I said, you know, the electric cars are all going to be made in China and some other countries, but mostly in China because we don't have what you need to do an electric car, but we have the greatest stuff in the world for doing combustion engine cars. You know what it's called? Liquid gold. It's right under our feet. We have more than any other country. And these people want to go all electric. And I said it. It sounds sort of simplistic, but it's really good. The cars don't go far, you know? Wouldn't you like a more complicated? They have a very simple problem. They don't go far, number one. If you want to go to the local deli, I think an electric car is a fantastic thing to have, right? <laughs> the greatest feeling for a person, a person that goes, gets a brand new, is the first 10 minutes of a charge. After that, they're a basket case trying to figure out where the hell they're going to get a charge. But, you know, how about this mandate? All cars will be, very shortly, electric. And, you know, they subsidize all the car companies. That's why the car companies are doing it. If they didn't subsidize it, they'd because they lose a fortune every time they make a car, just like on the windmills. They subsidize every windmill. They subsidize it. And the windmills now are all breaking down. Do you see what's going on? First time I've seen it, I, I've been preaching against these things. They're horrible for the environment. They kill all our birds. They're, they're destroying our seas. The whales are, you know, we had one whale in 10 years get washed up ashore in New Jersey. Now they, they're coming up every week. They're having, they're being destroyed because of the sound and the vibration. It's so bad. And the subsidy is, is massive. But with the electric car, so they want to go all electric. And the problem is really very expensive. They don't go far. But worse, they want to go to all electric trucks. And I have friends in the trucking industry. In fact, I think they're going to probably support me because these guys are going to put them out of business. You talk about a supply chain. The supply chain is going to be a disaster. So if you buy a great truck today, great truck with diesel, uh, they have these massive tanks, but not that big compared to a battery. The batteries would take up most of the truck. And they can do, like a Peterbilt, they can go 2,000 miles on a nice large tank of diesel fuel, right? 2,000, remember that. An electric truck can only go 300 miles. That means you have to get it you have to get it charged seven times, and it takes long to charge. You know, it doesn't go quickly. It takes a long time. And yet, they want to go to all electric trucks. Plus, there's a difference in power, and there's a difference in torque. It doesn't work. And one of the trucking companies said, you know, sir, for 50 years, he's one of the biggest guys, great guy. 
He said, for 50 years, I buy trucks. And every time I buy a truck, every year they get better and stronger and everything is better, just better. Incredible what they've done. If they go to electric trucks, they will have set us back 60 years because they don't work. The other problem they have is the battery is so big that it would take up most of the storage capacity. You know those big, beautiful trucks? That sucker is going to be loaded up with a battery because you can't make a little battery. It's got to be a big battery. They just don't go far enough and they don't work. And nothing can do, nothing you can do can stop it. I was in South Carolina. I met with a boat company, the great boat company, really make a lot of boats, uh, very beautiful fishing boats and everything else. And he said, we have a problem. They want us to only go two miles an hour. I said, how long? Out to 90 miles. How far do the boats go? They never go beyond 60. Okay, this is not good. So the boats are, you know, meant for speed and they're not allowed to go fast. That was one thing. The other thing is, sir, they're going to want us to go all battery. And I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. And he said, nobody's ever asked me this question. He said, if a boat goes in because, you know, the batteries, he told me, are so heavy, he doesn't even know if the boats will float. <laughs> and they take a lot of room, like the entire boat instead of a nice mercury engine with a tank of gas, right? Those beautiful mercury engines made in America, those beautiful mercuries, they want to put them out of business. So I said, if you have a boat, and because of the fact that your battery is very heavy and big, let's say it sinks. What happens to you if you're sitting on top of a boat and it sinks and the whole boat is a battery? Do you get electrocuted? And what would happen <laughs> if you look over there and you see a shark about 10 yards away? Would you go for the electrocution or would you go into the shark? And I told him, but I know what I do. I will take electrocution every single day. <laughs> no, but they want to change it. The other thing they want to change is our army tanks. You know, we make the best army tanks in the world. I kept the factory open in Ohio. I kept it open. The first thing, I was president-elect. They wanted to close the army tank. You could never reproduce these things, but I kept it open. I, I vetoed that order which made my congressman very happy over here, I have to tell you. But I vetoed it, and we kept it open. But now they want to make all electric army tanks. And the purpose is, so we have this great tank, and it goes in, and it's blasting the hell out of a country. Blast, but it's doing it in an environmentally friendly way. <laughs> These people are crazy. And they do have a problem with the size of the battery that you need to have it operate, because the Army tank would take a slightly different look. You'd have the tank the way it is, and behind it, you'd have this massive truck, which would be pulled by the tank. They want to do it environmentally friendly. Airplanes, too. They have a new fuel that the plane will be 15 percent less effective, but it will be environmentally friendly. It's the difference between losing those fights and winning these fights. These people are crazy. And they don't do anything about it. Now, the truck thing is so obvious, but they won't do anything about it. They never will. They want everything to be electric. And remember, you know what makes the electric is oil and gas and coal. You know that, right? <laughs> oil and gas and coal. That's what generates everything to make the electric. And in California, they have blackouts all the time, blackouts. And now they're supposed to take millions of cars on the same grid. I'm telling you that people, there's something wrong with them. And, you know, everybody, everybody in this room, when I explained the trucking and the supply chain and you can only go 300 miles versus 2,000 miles, there's not a person in this room that doesn't understand that. We don't have to meet for hours. I can tell you that story and then you can just say, okay, we can't do it. That's it. We go, right? These people don't care. They say, we don't care. We're doing it anyway. We don't care. I'm telling you, there's something wrong with them. They, they don't care. So what we have is more than a campaign. It's a movement. It's the greatest movement in history because, you know, never been, never been a movement like that. You know, uh, years ago, like Pat Buchanan, he did well in New Hampshire. I think he came in second place, but nice guy, Pat Buchanan. Other people, they did well. They didn't even have to win a primary, and, you know, they became famous for life. We won, in the last time, 50 states. Think of it, 50 states. We won every state. We then did great in the election. We got 12 million more votes or so, 12 million more votes than we got the first time. I was told, if you get 63 million votes, you can't lose. John McLaughlin said it, great pollster. Fabrizio said it, Tony Fabrizio, great pollster. 
We got millions and millions more votes than that, and bad things happen. We can't let that happen this time. And you have to be vigilant, too. Everybody has to be vigilant, you know, because we're, we're dealing with cheating dogs. But it's the greatest movement of all time. We want everything. You know, this is a uh, MAGA, make America great again. I was going to, you know, we had the country going good, and I was going to call the next campaign CAG, keep America great, but I hated the word CAG. What do we like better, MAGA or CAG? I think we like MAGA. But I was going to call it, so I said, well, wait a minute, keep America great again. But the problem is, when you look at what's happened, we're lucky we didn't call it that, because America, we love America, and we're going to make it great again, but it's not great right now. It's been laughed at all over the world. People think that we're a disintegrating nation. We're just a, a horribly failing place. Everything is going wrong. We give money to everybody. I mean, they give, we give billions and billions and billions away to people that don't even like us. I read the other day that in Afghanistan, this year, we gave $7 billion to Afghanistan. How the hell did that happen? And it's just the craziest thing, and we're going to change it all. We had it so good. This thing was running so good. We got hit with the COVID. Then we all of a sudden, you know, when we finished off with COVID, we did the biggest ventilator. We were giving ventilators all over the world, getting the goggles and the outfits and everything. We did a great job, but nobody knew what it was. But when we got hit with COVID, it was something that was incredible. We got, it was so bad. We got it done. Think of it, what China did to us with COVID. Think of it. All from the Wuhan lab. I said it was from the Wuhan lab. I felt confident it was from the Wuhan lab. I saw body bags, thousands of body bags around the Wuhan lab. It was from the Wuhan lab. They tried to blame it on France, on Italy, on anybody, on American soldiers. But when we got hit, after, as we were leaving, our stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming, and nobody thought a thing like that was possible. The stock market was actually higher than it was just prior to COVID. And, you know, we had so many people that did such a great job in this country, but we had this country going. We had the greatest economy in history. We had no inflation. We were all of the things that we talked about with energy. We were, we were at a level that we've never been at, and we were ready to rock and roll. And then we had a terrible result in an election that should have never happened. We ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with USMCA. Nobody thought that was possible. The congressmen here, most of them didn't think it was possible because we had to go through Congress. We had to end it. It had tremendous constituencies. The best trade deal ever made was the USMCA. And it was a giant win for Florida farmers and growers and producers. You know that. Tremendous win. I appointed nearly 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices, which has been amazing. I kept my promise and recognized Israel's eternal capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And really, probably most importantly, but they did nothing with it, I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal, but they were supposed to do something with it. And you could have, because of it. Iran didn't have any money. For four straight years under the Trump administration, I kept America safe, I kept Israel safe, and I kept the entire world safe. We were safe. We had nothing. This is. This is shocking, what's going on. What's going on now is shocking. All over the planet, our enemies knew that if you try to kill our citizens, we will kill you. If you spill a drop of American blood, we will spill a gallon of your blood. That's what it was. And it wasn't a threat. It was, that was just the way it was going to have to be. And we do it because we want to make sure that we're not starting wars. We didn't have to start wars. In the debate with Hillary, beautiful Hillary Clinton. She said, look at him. Look at the way he talks. He's going to get us into wars. He's going to start World War III. And I said, no, no. It's the way I talk that will keep you out of World War III. And when you think of it, how important elections are, you'd have millions of people alive right now if the election wasn't rigged, it'd be alive. Ukraine, Israel, the attack would have never been made. 
All these people would be alive. The cities would be thriving. To every American who is petrified that Joe Biden's catastrophic weakness will bring our country to ruin, which he has a great chance of doing, it's close to that anyway, close to economic ruin, I make you this promise as your president, and nobody else can say it. I will restore peace through strength. And yes, I am the only one that will prevent World War III because we are very close to World War III. And I know all the players. I know them all. I know them all, every one of them. We will prevent. And this won't be a first world war, a second world war. This will be obliteration because the level of power, of weaponry, of power, you've never seen anything like You don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. When they talk about global warming, because in 250 years, our ocean is going to be a hundredth of an inch higher. <laughs> and they never mentioned the power of nuclear weapons, where one madman can do damage the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. It's just crazy. It's just crazy to see it. It's crazy to talk about it. But I will stop, and it'll happen very quickly. There will not be a World War III, and we are closer than anybody understands. To protect our citizens from foreign threats, I will build a state-of-the-art missile defense shield. We will build that. We will build that. We need it. And it'll be jobs for America. It'll be built in America. You know, we did — we developed the technology, nobody else, by the way. A lot of people are like, oh, we developed the technology. No, we, the technology was developed by us, and it works. I mean, you see it. You know, uh, Ronald Reagan wanted to do it, but by — at that time, they really didn't have the technology. The concept was good, but they did. We have unbelievable technology. You can shoot a needle out of the air. It's incredible. But we do that. Wouldn't you feel a little safer, a little more comfortable if we could do that? And it's jobs. It's jobs. In America, I will end Joe Biden's war on American energy and unleash our most powerful economic weapon. This is our most powerful economic weapon. You know what it is? Drill, baby, drill. <laughs> most powerful weapon we have. We will stop Joe Biden's inflation disaster, and we will rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world with tax cuts, regulation cuts, energy price cuts, and interest rates cuts like you've never seen before. You know, we had a 2 percent interest rate, and now it's 8, 9, and 10 percent, and you can't get the money anyway. So what difference is there? Nobody's buying houses anymore. And unlike Ron DeSanctimonious, I will always protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors, because Ron wanted to Ron wanted to obliterate Social Security, and he wanted to raise the minimum age to 70 or even 75. When I get back into the Oval Office, we will totally obliterate the rest of the deep state. We're going to obliterate it. And we will, together, restore law and order in our country. We will completely overhaul the DOJ to investigate every Marxist prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist, and reverse enforcement of the law. And on day one, I will also sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a max — any mask mandate. We're not kidding. There will be no mask mandates. And incredibly that I even have to say this, because it's so ridiculous that it could even be a subject, I will keep men out of women's sports. And just as I did for four years very successfully, nobody's done it like I did, I will fully uphold our great Second Amendment. I will fully uphold it. And I will continue to protect innocent life. We will restore quickly free speech, and I will totally secure 
our elections so catastrophic results like we had cannot be had again. That can't have — to have a great country, you need borders and you need free and clear and beautiful elections, and we don't have either. This is what we must do in conclusion to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Israel is under attack. Our economy is cratering like we haven't seen before. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea formed together as a menacing and very destructive force. Our currency is crashing and will soon be the world's standard gone. It'll be gone. It'll be absolutely no longer the world standard, which will be the greatest single defeat of our country in over 200 years. If that happens, we will indeed be a third world country. None of these things — thank you — will ever happen with me, not even a little chance. Just like Russia would have never invaded Ukraine, China would not even have thought about raiding Taiwan, and the attack on Israel would never have happened, would have never happened. And we would have left Afghanistan with dignity and strength and pride instead of the greatest embarrassment in our history. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. They wouldn't have done near. So we are a failing nation. We are a nation in very serious decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we will never let it happen. If you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden and other people that are probably really running the country, then get every patriot you know, get them out to vote in the Florida primary on March 19th. And 2024, remember, it's our final battle. We're either going to have a country greater than ever before, or we're not going to have a country at all. It's our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government, and we will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will evict Joe Biden from the White House. And we will finish the job that we so brilliantly started. It was doing so beautifully. The great silent majority is rising like never before. And under our leadership, we're doing it together. The forgotten man and woman will not be forgotten any longer. They will not be forgotten any longer. They've been forgotten. They weren't forgotten for four years, but they will not be forgotten any longer. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will put America first, and we will make America great again, greater than ever before. Thank you, Florida. We